from Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School. And with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of today's Mass is made possible by a contribution from the estate of José de Meros, de Medeiros. This Mass is offered in memory of José Maria and Elizabeth de Medeiros. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God be with you all. Amen. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, who through the regenerating power of baptism have been pleased to confer on us heavenly life, Grant, we pray, that those you render capable of immortality by justifying them may, by your guidance, attain the fullness of glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Antioch, taking with him Silas, and went on to Derbe and to Lystra, where there was a disciple named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the believers in Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and had him circumcised because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went from town to town, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and increased in numbers daily. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they had come opposite Mycenae, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So passing by Mycenae, they went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. The word of the Lord. joyful no 
The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father, Jesus said to the disciples, If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me before it hated you. If you belonged to the world, the world would love you as its own. Because you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word I said to you, servants are not greater than their master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours. But they will do all these things to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's readings uh, contain two very, uh, two very different stories, an upbeat first reading and a face reality gospel. Is that life, maybe, both together, ups and downs, open doors and shut doors, welcomes and get losts? The gospel uh, brings us back to the Last Supper, the Last Supper that Jesus will have with his disciples. During the supper, before he departed to the Father, is how John puts it. And Jesus is realistic. He doesn't hide what lies ahead. He doesn't uh, sugarcoat the bitterness they will come across. If the world hates you, be aware that it hated me, too. The world. Those who have a, a different agenda to his. Those who want no interference in their agenda. Those who have no time for religion, his or any other religion, and tell you just get lost. When all this happens, Jesus says, remember, it happened to me, too. So what was Jesus speaking to his disciples, his followers, at their last meal together, their last supper? He knew what lay ahead. That very night, they would come to get him. He would be persecuted. Down the road, they would be persecuted too. Both he and they 
upset the religious leaders of that time. They interfered in their religious lives. They got on their religious nerves. You see, Jesus challenged the priests and practitioners of his own religion. They then turned against him, but he stood his ground. And then we jump some years and we come to Saul of Tarsus, one-time persecutor of the followers of Jesus, thrown to the ground from his high horse one day en route to Damascus. He heard a voice, but he didn't see anyone. Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you? He answered. But he still didn't see anyone. Saul might have lost his sight for a while, but he never lost his tongue. The voice from heaven or somewhere up there replied, I am Jesus and you are persecuting me. So two voices in conversation, one from up there and the other from the person who had been thrown to the ground. The two took each other on. Saul gave in. Maybe for the first time in his life, he gave in. The fire and brimstone persecutor of the followers of Jesus became one of them. And in this month's uh, daily mass, we've followed his missionary journey around the eastern part of the Mediterranean through present day Turkey and Greece. And he had a traveling companion, Barnabas, but they eventually broke up. This Saul Paul person, this now numbered as a saint, was not an easy man to work with. We learn about the various events and travels from Luke, writer of the third gospel and of the Acts of the Apostles. He hung in with Paul and recorded the events and peoples they met. So in today's reading, we find them in Turkey. A disciple named Timothy joins them. His, uh, his background was a bit out of the ordinary. His mother was Jewish. His father was Greek. And Timothy inherited his mother's Jewish religion. But he had never been circumcised. So Paul, not wanting any hassles from Jewish communities they might meet along the way, Paul had him circumcised. Then on the other hand, Paul was very insistent that converts to this new Christian religion did not need circumcision. Paul and conformity, seldom. Paul and uniformity, no, not always. They didn't always go hand in hand. At times, I don't know, you feel like telling Paul, listen, will you make up your mind? So we come across another, uh, some other interesting passages in that first reading you heard. They, that is Paul and Timothy, attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, did not allow them. Think of that for a moment. They weren't allowed to go where they had intended to go. The Holy Spirit said, no, not there. Had they prayed about it and got an answer? Had they second thoughts coming from the Holy Spirit, maybe? It certainly brings the Holy Spirit into the comings and goings of people like that, into their discussions, into their decisions. Or maybe... It was just Paul making up his own mind for himself and for the others. But the three-word prayer, 
Come, Holy Spirit, can be a short but very effective prayer when faced with an important decision. And finally, there was Paul's dream about the man from Macedonia calling him to come to their part of Greece and help them. And this time, it was no on the one hand, on the other hand. They looked for the shortest way to Macedonia to get there as quickly as they could. For all who seek guidance, we pray to the Lord. Lord For guidance counselors, spiritual directors, advisors, we pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have asked us to pray for them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord A moment to include our own intentions in this Mass. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Holy Spirit, come inspire. Come kindle in our hearts your fire. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept in compassion, Lord, the offerings of your family, that under your protective care they may never lose what they have received, but attain the gifts that are eternal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and all our bishops. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her husband, with the apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Keep safe, O Lord, those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go from this Mass in the peace of Christ. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. On behalf of Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Fitzpatrick, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and all of us here at Daily Mass, our best wishes for a restful weekend, and we'll be looking for you all again on Monday.